Hey everyone, this is Tom DeKesey, Arts and Culture Editor at The Gateway, and I'm here to give the forum report from the Meyer Howards Forum on March 1st for the 2021 Students' Union Elections. Presidential candidate Rowan Lee has been busy campaigning over Instagram, but some of the comments he's made seem a little confusing for someone running to lead RSU. In one of these recent stories, he told high school students to go to McEwen instead of the U of A if they weren't planning to do a professional degree. Some would probably see this as an unexpected take from a candidate for SU president, but Lee was unapologetic in his stance. The Gateway has already reported an 11% cut from provincial funding this year, and Lee made it clear that the university is on a downward spiral, and he doesn't want to see new students hopping on a sinking ship. It's also, to be blunt, I said it because it's true. Um, U of A has dropped massively in quality and skyrocketed in price because of the cuts that we're experiencing. And for many students, McEwen is simply better value for what they're looking for. Um, so you may ask, well, why would I choose to be negative like that about an institution that is a second home to me and that I want to serve with the Students' Union? Well, there is a public perception and a very strong and inaccurate perception in our provincial government that U of A is this massively bloated, wasteful institution, and the cuts won't hurt the quality of education that we receive here. We need to counter that narrative by truthfully telling people that these massive and disproportionate cuts are destroying U of A, are massively reducing the quality of education that our institution can offer, are damaging to students, and if it keeps happening, people will not come here for an education. So was I negative? Yes. But we need to stop putting a happy face on a horrible situation. If you haven't been following this year's SU elections, let's fill you in real quick. There are four uncontested races this year including President, Vice President Academic, Vice President External, and Board of Governors Representative. And yes, for the first time in 10 years, there isn't even a hamster available to make the presidential race a contest. But although these races are uncontested, that doesn't mean students don't have a choice. Despite there only being one candidate on the ballot for four different races, there's still one more option, none of the above. Now what happens if none of the above wins over a candidate? Does the SU wander around aimlessly without a president? Not necessarily. The SU usually waits until by-elections in the fall to fill any vacancies. At the Meyer Howards Forum, uncontested candidates were asked why students should vote for them instead of none of the above. Vice President Academic Candidate Abner Montero highlighted his past experience, bringing up the year he spent in the General Faculties Council's Learning Environment Subcommittee. I'm at Platform consulting with students and all of the issues that they faced over the past five years. I've taken everything that I've heard from students and making sure that I put into my platform in tangible ways to make sure that I can get results for them. Um, things that I believe that can be advocated for uh, and that can be accomplished within a one year term. Board of Governors Representative Candidate Dave Conrad highlighted all the projects that wouldn't be pursued were he not to be re-elected. He also mentioned that he is one of only three student positions that sits on the board. So just in terms of my role, um, I, I want to work for the inclusion of marginalized voices at the board through a, a recruitment policy change. Um, and I want to push for uh, tracking data around systemic racism at the university to uh, begin quantifying that issue so that we have a, a, stronger, a stronger platform to stand on when speaking against it. And then I also have tangible ideas for uh, increased board transparency. And all of these things are not things that, that my colleague, the SU president on the board ha has run on. So if, if I'm not elected in, you will not see these projects worked on. Vice President External Candidate Christian Fotang joked the students should vote for him because he's a better dancer. But this claim is yet to be fact-checked. On a more serious note, Fotang said students should like him because he's passionate about student issues. See, why I'm running is because I, I genuinely do care about these issues that I've started with in my opening speech and and that I'm continuing to talk about as I answer these questions, you know, advocating for a more affordable education, mental health resources, and the issues of performance-based funding, which do which does affect students and is going to affect students, um, the quality of students' education. So I have plans to work on that, and I have the passion and and an energy to, to be ready to work on that. So that's why I'm hoping to earn your vote this um, uh, this coming uh, th third and fourth. Last but not least. Presidential candidate Rowan Lee clarified that the none of the above vote is designed to be used for candidates whose student thinks are incompetent or ill-intentioned. Lee also emphasized that he is neither of those. 
So I'll talk about my competence and my vision. So I think in my time as BOG rep and as VPX, I've demonstrated that I'm competent and that I have the ability to execute on big complex projects. I've demonstrated my ability to win people over and change minds as an advocate on issues like tuition deregulation and others. So I do believe I'm ready for this role. Then what about my plan? Well, people often criticize SU candidates for promising the same things year over year over year, and that has in the past been true. You will see that in my platform, I'm promising a lot of new, different and exciting things you've not seen in an SU election before. If I can even pull one third of that off, it'll be really meaningful change for this campus. So basically I've got plans that are worth giving a shot and I've demonstrated the ability to take that shot reasonably well. I am by no means a perfect candidate and I won't be a perfect president, but I do believe I'll serve you well. And that's why I think I can earn your vote. So have these candidates convinced you to vote for them? The Vice President Operations and Finance race has been able to get by most of the forums with a pretty standard array of questions, like how they plan to fundraise for projects and generate revenue for the SU. However, at the Meyer Horwitz Forum, the candidates running in the Vice President Operations and Finance race were met with skepticism regarding their competency. Julia Velasco is a second year psychology student while Emily Kamani is a fourth year immunology and infection student. Both candidates were asked why students should trust them to manage the SU's over $10 million budget, despite them not being business students with financial backgrounds. Now, while we do know that the past two vice presidents, operations and finance have been business students, being a business student doesn't mean that you magically know how to organize the budget of a multi-million dollar organization. Also, and let's let you in on a little secret. There are a lot of people who work at the SU behind the scenes, and they wouldn't just let a student run the SU into the ground, business student or not. Now, it's totally fair to ask candidates about their qualifications, but to make assumptions that they don't know anything about the portfolio gives off really bad vibes. Velasco and Kamani clearly felt the same way, and they defended themselves as they should. The role is, um, it's not mandatory to be a business student. I just want to start for that. But um, this year, I'm currently an arts counselor and I've had the opportunity to work with Alana, our current DPOF, a lot this year. So I've had a lot of exposure to the DPOF portfolio, specifically the Sustainable Capital Fund Committee and the West Refugee Student Board. Um, on top of that, um, I've, already, I've independently started my own initiative called Bags of Hope, where I delivered school supplies to less fortunate students in the Philippines and provided support to families during the strict COVID-19 lockdown they had there. And I really, um, um, I was, I guess, part of the financial and fundraising side of things. And um, but what I think really enriched my financial operations um, history, it would be my um, experience being part of the audit committee. And I had the opportunity to work with SRAs and FAs and review and audit their expenditures and budgets um, for uh, this year. Um, it, the thing that's important is what you have to offer to students and the way that you're going to serve them. Um, but this year I am a science counselor and I got to sit on the Sustainability and Capital Fund Committee where we adjudic adjudicated projects. Um, before we adjudicated them, we had to go through um, budgets, so we have to deal with financials. Um, I am also, um, I take part in research and so I've written a, a lot of research proposals and there, you have to deal with a lot of budgets in those proposals. So I am confident that I do know how to deal with budgets, I know how to deal with financials, and anything that I don't know how to do, I am willing to learn. Criticize their platforms all you want, but making assumptions about candidates based on their degrees isn't really a great move. Once again, this is Tom DeKezi, and this has been the Forum Report for the Meyer Howard's Forum. Take care.